Hello everyone. Loom is a screen recording tool. Teachers use Loom to deliver class content as videos. Over time, you build a library of content to share with your students. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to use Loom to record lessons for your classroom. In addition, I'm going to show you what to do with those videos to give you some options for publishing them to your students. To get started, we're going to go to loom.com and click the Get Loom for Free button. I'm gonna sign up using my Google account. When prompted, I'm going to indicate I'm a teacher and click Continue. Then I'm going to, in this case, install the extension. There is also a desktop application you can use, but for this demo, we're gonna use the Chrome extension. From the Chrome Web Store, click the Add to Chrome button. This will add an extension to your Chrome browser. From here, click the Add Extension button to confirm. At the top of your Chrome browser, you'll find that the Loom extension has been added to your extension toolbar. You can drag that around to where you want it. Now we're ready to record. Let's open up a slide presentation that we want to display. To start a recording, click the Loom icon in the extension tray. First thing you're going to see is Loom is going to ask for permission to use your camera. It's a good idea to click allow here. We can turn off the camera later in the settings. There's a lot of settings to look at, but we'll go through them one by one. The first thing you want to see is the screen cam, screen only, cam only options. Screen plus cam will record your screen, but will also record whatever desktop camera you have. This could be the camera that's part of your laptop, or it could be a document camera, or it could be some sort of video conferencing camera you have. The second option is screen only. That means no camera, only what you see on your desktop. You'll notice that when I switch to screen only, the camera turns off and instead of showing the live feed on my video camera, shows the profile picture associated with my Google account. The third option is camera only. That's if you wanna record just yourself or whatever your camera is pointing at. Camera only is very handy for art teachers who are trying to demonstrate a skill or math teachers who want to show a demonstration of how to solve an equation. So if you have a document camera and you want to just record what is being shown on your document camera, then you want camera only. If you're recording your screen, you have the option to record your entire desktop or just the current tab. The entire desktop will record all of the applications open on your computer. You'll also see all the desktop icons, so if you have a messy desktop like me, you might want to clean that up a little bit before you start recording. If you record the current tab, that will only display the currently selected Google tab that you have open. That's handy if you just want to show only a slideshow presentation or some other video or whatever information you have in the current browser. If you're recording with your camera, you may notice you have different options for camera sources. So if you had a document camera and or you had a laptop camera, you could choose from which camera you wanted to use. There's also an option to flip the camera. So if you wanted to show your face looking the other way, then you have that as an option. The microphone audio switch allows you to enable or disable the microphone on your computer. When you enable this, you may have to get permission for or Loom to use your microphone. Under advanced options, you'll find the microphone source. You may have access to multiple microphones. For example, if you have an external microphone or if your laptop has a microphone, some document cameras even have microphones. So from this drop down box, you'll be able to select which microphone you want to use. The include tab audio checkbox lets you silence the tab. If you're watching a tab that has a video or some other sound, you can silence that if you want to. The use photo toggle allows you to hide your picture. Control menu shows or hides the menu in the bottom left hand corner and the recording countdown lets you enable the feature where it shows you a three second countdown before the recording starts. All right now we're finally ready to start recording. Click the start recording button to begin recording. You'll get a three second countdown and what you'll see in the bottom left hand corner we have our floating head. We can take that and move it to where it makes the most sense so you can move it from top bottom left to right. The triple dot here allows you to hide your menu because that is going to be visible on your recording. You can change the size of the floating head from small, medium to large. If you do large, it'll be front and center. So that's if you're trying to do some sort of wrap up or you want to focus on yourself and not on the materials. I'm going to put that back in the, in the bottom left hand corner. If you wanted to, you can cancel the recording. If you make a mistake or want to start over, you can do that. You can pause the recording. So if you want to take a break and when you're done, you can click the check mark to finish the recording. 
and then I get a message saying it's been saved. The zoom editor is one of the highlights of the application. From here, you can start by changing the title of your video to give it something a little more user friendly. Below the title, you'll find the space to type a description. It is optional, but it can be uh, useful if you make a lot of videos. Your video is already available online. You can take this link and share it with other people in an email or post it to Google Classroom and anybody can view it just by copying this link and sharing it to other people. Privacy setting allows you to control how easy your video is to find. By setting it to link sharing, you're only allowing people to view your video if they have the link. If you set it to public, then it becomes uh, Google searchable. So people are able to find it just by doing a Google search. You can send people an email invite to view this video. If you do that, only the people who have a specific email address will be able to view your video. So it's kind of locking it down to only allow certain people to see it. You can also put a password on your little video. Enter a password, confirm it, click save, and people will only be able to view the video after they enter the password. Under settings, you find more options. You can enable or disable comments and the email notifications that go with the comments. You can allow or disallow emoji reactions, which are basically these icons underneath the video. You can display an animated GIF preview of your video. So when students come to the website to view your video, they get an animated GIF as the preview. The Loom branded player allows you to disable the ad at the end of the video. You have the option to prevent students from downloading your videos, and then you can hide the analytics for the video that indicates how many times this video has been seen. Arguably, the most important feature in Loom is the ability to edit and remove clips from your video. To begin editing your video, click the trim button. Below your video, you see a bar that is the timeline of your video. You can click at any point in the video to preview what your video looks like at that moment. The start trimming feature allows you to remove parts of your video. You can remove the beginning or end of your video, or if you made a mistake in the middle, you can even remove part of that. Click the start trimming button to reveal the edit tool. Move the front and back of the tool to highlight the clip you want to remove. You can tweak your selection to the precise tenth of a second. Then click the remove button to delete your clip. The remove clip is highlighted in red in the video timeline. If you hit the play button, you can preview your video with the clip removed. If you made a mistake, don't worry, you can undo your change. When you're recording voiceover videos like this, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. It's natural and it's okay. Just do what I do. Take a deep breath, pause, and allow yourself room in the video to edit the mistake. Then you can come in, use this tool, it's as if it never happened. So in this example, I removed the first few seconds of the video, a mistake from the middle, and then I'm going to chunk off the end because usually that's just me wrapping up. This is a typical edit that you may have to do for your videos. Use the play button to preview your changes, and remember, you are an educator, not a professional movie editor. It's more important to be done than it is for it to be perfect. After editing, click the Publish Changes button to commit your changes. Loom will take a few minutes to process your video. Uh, that's how it applies all of your changes. The next feature I'm going to show you is the Call to Action button. This lets you create a button that is visible when your students mouse over the video. With this button, you can direct them to a different website it could be your Google Classroom or it could be some other resource you want them to review. It's just another way to create an interactive way for your students to, to be sent to another site. The custom thumbnail feature lets you put a nice looking picture as the front cover for your video. I'm going to show you how to quickly create a cover photo. Use the snipping tool that is available on all Windows computers. Click the new button and then drag over the area that you want to highlight. Save this picture to your computer then re-upload it to Loom as the thumbnail. This is the first thing they'll see before they play your video. Next, I'm going to highlight some tips for publishing your video to your students. The first is to simply copy this link from Loom to your students. You can send in an email, post it to your Google Classroom or some other LMS. This is a way for you to quickly and easily share a video with other people. The next way to share your Loom video is to download it to your Google Drive and then make it available through the G Suite platform. In this case, I have the Google Drive for Filestream installed, so I'm able to download the video directly to my G Drive. Once on my local G Drive, the video will be synced with the Google Cloud Online, which will make it available in all of the Google G Suite platform. Once uploaded to your Google G Suite, you can attach this as an assignment like you could a Google Doc or any other Google slide or presentation. 
you can give it a title, give it instructions, and then attach it by adding it as a Google Drive file. Because it's a video and can't be edited, you can just allow students to view the file and don't bother making a copy for each student. Google Sites is another way to share videos with your students. Over time, you can curate videos, both that you've created or found elsewhere, onto a centralized website that you can share with your students. A lot of teachers are using Google Sites as a companion with Google Classroom. That way you can present information in a different way that's not just assignments, but actually just a curated list of information. The last tip I'm going to share about how to publish your new videos is to embed them within a hyperdoc. A hyperdoc is a Google Doc or a Google Slide or any other electronic document where you embed a video and other related information and assign that to your students so that you can organize all the information that they need for an assignment in one place. In this case, I'm highlighting a video, but you could include questions for them to consider, questions for them to answer. You could also include links to other resources that they could use for their research. Well, that's about the end of this tutorial. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments. I'll answer those below. Also, if you are using Loom and you want to post some examples of some awesome lessons you've created, go ahead and post those in the comments as well. I would love to see how you're using Loom. Thanks again for watching. Let me know if I can help.